All right, it's time to give uh, the low-fat minnow a little bit of a, a change. I wouldn't say it's an upgrade. It's just a little bit of a different way to tie it. Um, when I first developed a low-fat minnow, you could dial it in to about you know two inches, and I, I was worked on a way to, to tie a longer one. Well, now that we have Bruiser Blend dubbing, we absolutely can tie longer low-fat minnows, and so I've been working on some of those. Um, I posted a picture of a perch pattern, and so we, we got a lot of requests for that, so I'm actually going to tie one of those up right now. Um, so this is the, the new version of the low-fat minnow in perch coloration. Anyway, to start out, I'm using a, a, a pretty different hook. This is one of Alan Fly Fishing's new carp hooks. Now, just because it says carp doesn't mean you can't tie other stuff on it. So, um, this actually is the MP002 hook, and it's in a size 1. Now, one of the things I really like about this hook is that it's super heavy wire. Um, and what that's going to do with the low fat minnow is it's going to cause it to sink really slowly and kind of suspend in the water without having necessarily to use a sinking line. So I like that quite a bit. And then also a lot of times with heavy wire hooks it's hard to set the hook. But as you can see this hook has a pretty long point. And so because of the long point going down to a conical you know, sharpened point um, it, it actually penetrates really well. I, I caught a huge carp on this a few weeks ago and uh, you know I didn't even really have to set the hook hardly at all and it was on and then uh, bass fished with it last weekend and it's it's a phenomenal hook super impressed with it so anyway enough about the hook I start out with the fly uh, for this one instead of using white I'm actually going to use fluorescent fire orange UTC 70 thread and I'm just going to dress my hook all the way to the bend and as you'll see as you tie on this hook it's a fairly short shanked hook so it really lends itself well to the low fat minnow where most of the stuff is tied in at the front of the hook okay for a perch you're gonna have basically a yellow body or, or yellow belly and then a an olive to darker brownish black top so I'm just gonna make it simple I'm gonna use yellow and olive marabou to form the body of this one and so I've got this. This is Spirit River Marabou. Color is lemon yellow. So I'm going to pull some Marabou off the, the side of the, the stem here. And so I'm going to tie this fly roughly, you know, I don't know, two to three length body lengths uh, of tail. And just tie that all in in one spot. And actually, because this is a little bit beefier of a fly, I'm going to use more marabou. So I'm going to pull some off the other side. Okay, now we're going to take some uh, Palmer chenille, just olive Palmer chenille, and tie it in right where our tail ends. You, as you see. In the previous version of the low fat minnow, we'd be wrapping uh, cactus chenille right here, and then another section of marabou, and then palmer chenille. Uh, well, we've kind of eliminated those steps on this bigger version of the low fat minnow. So, six or seven wraps of palmer chenille, tie it off. Okay, now that we're up to here, take another clump of yellow marabou and lay that right over the top of the palmer chenille. And now we'll tie in the olive. So I've got a pretty healthy clump of olive, and I'll just tie that in. So that's roughly the same length as the other clumps. It's all right if these top clumps are a little bit shorter. So just like the other low fat minnow, it really doesn't start looking like anything until you get it wet and 
finalize it. So. Okay. Now so we're we're gonna turn this into a perch. We've got bruiser blend dubbing, and I'm gonna take a pinch of the brown olive color, which is probably my favorite color of this bruiser blend dubbing. So I've got it in a clump. I'm gonna kind of preen it back and forth. If you need to add a little bit more, go ahead. It doesn't really take too much to do this. So there I've got a pretty nice clump of bruiser blend and I'm just going to put that right on top of the fly and tie that in with three or four wraps. Okay, I've done the same thing with the canary color of bruiser blend and I'm just going to take that and tie it in right on the bottom of this fly. Okay, so now that I've got the bruiser blend tied in I'm going to take the top section and just kind of fold it back and tie it tie it down and then bring the bottom section underneath tie that one down too. Again fly doesn't look like much right now yet. So I'm going to whip finish trim the thread Okay, now I'm just going to take this uh, little metal comb or if you have Velcro or a toothbrush or something like that, just come in here and brush it out. Especially that bottom piece of bruiser blend, you kind of have to get in there and tease it on each side of the hook. Okay, for the eyes I'm using these uh, Montana Fly Company Fish Eyes 6mm Blue Steel. nicely place the eyes and I've been playing a lot with the the Loon UV clear finish um, I'm going to first tag it with some thin to set the eyes and then I'll go over the whole head with the thick and on the bottom sometimes you have to pull a little bit of the dubbing away so that when the UV cure glue seeps in it doesn't eat up your hook gap so that'll seat my eyes pretty well now I'm going to come in with some of the thick just kind of put it on nice and messy at first and take your bodkin through and kind of even it out and now just rotate your fly to kind of even out the rest of that epoxy and when it with it straight up tag it with the light now this loon thick finish will leave a little bit of tack on it and so a couple ways you can get get away with it is the thin stuff leaves a lot less tack and so you can tag it with that or you can put some uh, hand sanitizer on your hands and rub it on the eyes that'll take it off or you can just use some uh, good old Sally Hansen's and that's what I'm gonna do Okay, with the head dry now, we're ready to, to put the final touches on this. So I'm just going to use a black Sharpie and an orange Sharpie. And so I'm going to kind of preen the, the bruiser blend out a little bit. And that's really what I want to mark up. It'll go through to the marabou a little bit. But perch have vertical black stripes. So we're just going to add some by pulling it tight and just on each side adding some stripes and as we get further back we'll make them a little bit smaller so there's our vertical bars and then for the orange I've just been coming kinda of right under the chin and just kind of tagging it and preening it back a little bit to try to blend it a little bit but we just kinda of want to make an orange kinda of throat even though it's not the gill plate necessarily that we're mimicking they have bright orange fins so I mean if you want to get real creative you can come back here uh, about right here and add another little orange dab that looks like a fin put one of those on each side 
Anyway, that's our perch, and we'll show you what it looks like when it's wet. So there you can see the, the wet version. Now it's not going to stay all compact like this in the water. It actually opens up and breathes and acts like a real fish. But if you got perch in your waters, you got musky, smallmouth, largemouth, or even trout, this is a killer. I mean, this, this coloration has, has done some serious work. Uh, but anyway, a couple other really good ones are... Uh, tied in pure white. Everything white except for an orange throat. Um, came up with that color combination when I wanted to match a uh, Rapala X-Wrap that I was throwing the other day when I was fishing for smallmouth. And that one's done really well. And then, you know, all of our other traditional colors, the sexy shad, the shad, the bluegill, um, and any other crazy combos you guys can come up with. Anyway, there's the larger version of the low-fat minnow.